So in this case, I think you'd all agree that the term that we can use is waxing because we started with a new moon when we can't see any part of the moon. The second phase, we can already see some parts of it. So we can see or we can say that the moon is becoming bigger. So we call this a waxing moon. Now, what type of a waxing moon is this? Is this waxing gibbous or is it waxing crescent? Welcome back to Gurung Pinoy. If this is your first time to visit our channel, please subscribe, like our video, and hit the bell button so that you'll be notified of the new videos that we have. In this video, we will be talking about the different types of eclipse and the different phases of the moon. These are two very important topics that are usually covered in the licensure examination for teachers. We will be starting with the different types of eclipse that we have. Now, we have two types of eclipses. That's the solar eclipse and the lunar eclipse. Solar means the sun, while lunar, of course, would mean the moon. So as you can see here, again, as we say solar, we're talking about the sun. So it's actually the sun which is covered by the other heavenly body in this type of eclipse. When you say lunar, the moon is the one that's covered by another heavenly body when we talk about this type of eclipse. Now, when we're talking about the different heavenly bodies that we have, we're actually talking of the three types of the major heavenly bodies that we have. That's the sun, the moon, and the earth. Now, eclipses would happen if these three heavenly bodies would be aligned or if they, for, they form a line. Okay? So that's when our eclipse would happen. Okay, so we go to the first type of eclipse that we have. Again, that's the solar eclipse. For you to remember this very easily, we use the mnemonic or the, the acronym SME. Okay, so for solar eclipse, that's SME or that's ME. That means the alignment of the three heavenly bodies would be the following. The sun, then the moon, and the earth. Or which means that the moon is between the sun and the earth. So the usual lab question that you'll have here is... For example, the let would ask you, what type of eclipse would happen or what type of eclipse would you have if the moon falls between the sun and the earth? Okay, so the moon is between the sun and the earth. So that means you have sme, that's sun, moon, and earth. So in this type of eclipse, again, you'd call that the solar eclipse. So as you can see in our illustration here, you have the sun, you have the moon between the sun and the earth, and you have the earth on the other side. Now, you also see the terms umbra and penumbra. Okay? Now, these two terms are also very common when we're talking about eclipses. When you say umbra, that's the part of the earth that falls under the shadow of your eclipse. So, say you find the Philippines here in the umbra of your solar eclipse. When that happens, that means the Philippines is going to have a total solar eclipse. So, napaka dilimpo when that happens, okay? But when you are in an area where you only have the penumbra of the eclipse, that means you are just going to experience partial eclipse, okay? So, it's not going to be total eclipse, but only partial eclipse that you'll uh, experience in that place okay so that's the meaning of the umbra the umbra is directly under the sh shadow of formed by the eclipse penumbra is just outside the shadow okay so that's going to just be partial eclipse when you are in an area that has just the penumbra of your eclipse okay so again solar eclipse that's me sun moon and earth now we go to the second type of eclipse which is the lunar eclipse for the lunar eclipse we use the acronym sen SEM would stand for Sun, Earth, and Moon. As you can see in our acronym here, the Earth is the one which is between the Sun and the Moon. Okay, So again, the Earth is between the Sun and the Moon. So that's SEM, the Sun at one side, the Earth in the middle, and the Moon at the other side of your eclipse. You still have the terms Umbra and Penumbra. And basically, the meaning would just be the same as the one that we had in the previous slide. Okay, so again, very easy. When you see the words eclipse in your licensure exam for teachers, you think of SME, that sun, moon, earth, and your answer would be solar eclipse. But when you see the terms 
sen, or if you see that the, the, the question is telling you that the sun is at the other side, the earth falls between the sun and the moon, and that's going to be sem, so that sun, earth, and moon. So in that case, you have your lunar eclipse. Okay, so that ends our discussion for the different types of eclipses. Um, we go to the next next discussion that we have, and that's going to be about the different phases of the moon. Okay, now when you think of the different phases of the moon, you need to learn the four the four terms that we have here. So the first term that we have is waxing. Okay, waxing, this simply means the moon is becoming bigger. The second term is waning, which means that the moon is becoming smaller. Then the third term that we have is the term gibbous. Okay, the term gibbous here simply means the moon, as you can see, is more than one-fourth. Okay, you can see more than one-fourth of the moon. And the other side, the other term, the last term that we have is crescent which is the opposite of gibbous. Crescent here means you can see less than one-fourth of the moon. Now, as you know, mga kaguro, we only see one side of the moon all throughout our lifetime. We never see the other side of the moon. So we call that side of the moon that we never see its dark side. Okay. So again, we only see just half the side of the moon. Now, sometimes the let would ask you, there is a common question in the let that asks, why do we see only one side of the moon? Okay, why do we see only one side of the moon all throughout our lifetime? The correct answer for that question would be we only see one side of the moon because the moon rotates as it revolves around the earth. Now, as you can remember, the moon actually does not have its own light. The moon is just borrowing the light or it's just reflecting the light coming from the sun. Okay, and there's only there's also one common question in the left. The left might ask you, what is the only natural satellite of the Earth? When you talk of satellite, you're talking about a thing that orbits a planet. Okay, so a satellite would mean something that orbits a planet. So if the left would ask you, what is the only natural satellite of the Earth? Your answer would be the moon. Okay, so we go to the, the different phases of the moon that we have here. So as I have mentioned, the moon cannot make its own light. It simply reflects the light coming from the sun. So we see that when we are on the earth. Now the first phase of the moon that we have here is this one, where you see that the moon is completely dark. Okay, and we call this phase the new moon. Okay, so again, that's the new moon when the moon is completely dark. Now, the next phase that we have here is this one, okay? Now, we go back to the terms that we have a while ago. So, again, waxing means the moon becomes bigger. Waning means the moon is becoming smaller. Gibbous means you can see more than one-fourth of the moon. And crescent means you can only see less than one-fourth of the moon. So, we started from our new moon here. And the next phase that we have is right here. And as you can see, you already have some parts of the moon that is visible. Okay, so the yellow part there is the part of the moon that you can see. So can we say, is this a waxing moon or is this a waning moon? Again, waxing would mean the moon is becoming bigger. And waning means the moon is becoming smaller. So in this case... I think you'd all agree that the term that we can use is waxing because we started with a new moon when we can't see any part of the moon. The second phase, we can already see some parts of it. So we can see or we can say that the moon is becoming bigger. So we call this a waxing moon. Now, what type of a waxing moon is this? Is this waxing gibbous or is it waxing crescent? Can we see more than one-fourth of the moon? Or do we only see less than one-fourth of it? Okay, so I think you'd all agree, based on our illustration, that this is a waxing crescent moon. Waxing, because it has become bigger. Crescent, because we can only see one-fourth of the moon. Okay, we can only see one-fourth of the moon. So that's waxing crescent moon. Now we go to the next phase of the moon, which is this first half here. Okay, we have one-fourth of the moon that is completely seen, and we call this the first quarter. Okay, so the first quarter. Now again, we call this one-fourth 
uh, you might say that you can actually see one half. But as you can remember, this is only one side of the moon. Okay, so if we'd, we'd, con we'd consider the rest of the parts of the moon, this is actually just one-fourth of the moon. Okay, so this is the second part, and then we still have the two parts at the back. Okay, so that's just the first quarter. Only one-fourth of the moon is seen. Now we go to the next phase that we have here. Is the moon becoming bigger? If bigger, then we say waxing. If smaller, then we say waning. So as you can see from your first quarter here, you see a bigger part of the, of the moon. So we say that this is still a waxing moon. Now, can you see more than one-fourth of the moon? Or do you only see less than one-fourth? Okay. I think you'd all agree that you can see more than one-fourth of the moon. So this would be your waxing gibbous moon. Okay. Or waxing gibbous phase of the moon. Now, we go to the next phase. As you can see here, in our next phase, you can see all the parts of the moon, okay? So the half, half the parts that we can see all throughout our lifetime is visible, and we call this a full moon, okay? So that's the full moon that you have there. Now, after the full moon, the next phase that we have is this one here. Now, as you can see from your full moon, the moon becomes smaller, Okay, the moon becomes smaller, but we can still see more than one-fourth of it. It becomes smaller, so we call this waning because it's becoming smaller from the full moon. Now, we call this gibbous because we can still see more than one-fourth of the moon. So that's a waning gibbous moon. And the, last, uh, the next phase of the moon that we have here is similar to the first quarter that we have on top. Okay, so we call this the last quarter. Sometimes you'd also call this the third quarter. So last quarter or third quarter moon. And the last phase that we have from the last quarter, you see half of the moon here, its visible side, and you only see this part, this small part, in the last phase of the moon. So as you can see, the moon has actually become smaller. So we call this waning. And since we can only see Less than one-fourth of the moon, we call this last phase waning crescent moon. Okay, so again, it's very important for you to know the different terms that we have. Waxing, if the moon is becoming more visible or the moon is becoming bigger. Waning, if it is becoming smaller. So from, for example, from a full moon, you only see this part here, so that has become less visible. So we call this a waning moon. Now again, there's two other terms which are opposites. Gibbous when you can see more than one-fourth of the moon and crescent if you can only see less than one-fourth of the moon. Now sometimes the let would not be too specific. The, sometimes the let would not ask you whether it's a waxing crescent, whether it's waxing gibbous, and so on. So now the mnemonic that I teach you the other mnemonic that I teach you is new wax full one. New wax full one here would just stand for new moon, waxing moon, full moon, and waning moon. Because sometimes the let would, would just ask you, what phase of the moon would follow a new moon? Okay, what phase of the moon would follow a new moon? So again, in that type of question, your answer would be waxing moon. Because as you can see in our mnemonics, new wax full one. So after a new moon, there's going to be a waxing moon. Or sometimes the let would ask you, what phase of the moon would follow a full moon? Okay, so what phase of the moon would follow a full moon? Your answer would be waning. Okay, so your answer would be waning. If the let would ask you what phase of the moon would follow a waning moon, so then your answer would be a new moon. Okay, so just remember these mnemonics here. And in case the let becomes too specific, just remember the four terms that I've taught you today, waxing, waning, crescent, and gibbous. All right, so that ends our discussion in this video. I hope that you have learned the different types of eclipses that we have, solar eclipse and lunar eclipse, and the different phases of the moon that we have just discussed here. So again, hanggang sa muli, ito po ang inyong gurong Pinoy na nagsasabing maliit man na butil ng mga kaalaman, ang dulo nito ay malaking kaginawaan. Please don't forget to subscribe, write, uh, like our video, and hit the bell button so that you'll be notified of the next videos that we'll have. Maraming salamat at hanggang sa muli, mga kaguro.